Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you from the Business Radio X studio. Well, not really, <laughs> but we're at the virtual Business Radio X studio, normally inside Renaissance Bank in Alpharetta, but not right now during our period of social distancing. Uh, but uh, folks, hopefully we'll be back sometime soon, but we're still around and live and trying to get the word out on great business leaders in our area. And we have one of those with us today, Chris Leggett. He's the Chief Executive Officer of LGE Community Credit Union. Chris, welcome. Good morning, John. How are you this morning? I'm great. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, tell us about LGE Community Credit Union. Got a sense of what you do, but tell us what you do, how you help folks. Well, LGE Community Credit Union started in 1951 down at the Lockheed plant here in Marietta. So we've been around now almost 70 years. Uh, we actually went community-based uh, back in the early part of this uh, century, in early 2000. And uh, we now have about 13 branches, about a billion and a half in assets, and a little over 120,000 members. I've been here since 2007. I've been serving as CEO since 2008. So for the last 13 years or so. That's awesome. Now, t- talk about the credit unions in general. For those that don't know what a credit union is, and and what I mean, you have all a lot of essential banking services that you offer, uh, but there's probably some folks out there that don't realize the extent of ser- those services. So maybe you can outline those. Well, I like to tell people that. Uh, we do all of the banking services that you might expect as a consumer, uh, savings accounts, checking accounts, consumer lending, which includes cars, mortgages. We also do business and commercial lending and deposits as well. It, the difference between the way that a bank does it and the way that a credit union do, does it is actually how we are structured and what we do with the uh, income that we generate uh, from the lending and other activities that, that we partake in. So. Uh, the old adage of a cooperative or a people helping people organization. So at the end of the day, I I don't have shareholders. I don't have stockholders. uh, I have members. So I have everyone at our credit union that's a member has a vested interest in our success, either through uh, realizing greater value through their deposits. So savings, CDs, IRAs, or getting the best possible rate they can get on a loan. Uh, be a mortgage or a car, for instance, a credit card, those kinds of things. So all of our profits go back into uh, enhancing the services and convenience that we can provide to our members or a better value through lower rates on your loans, better rates on your savings deposits, or a, a, a lower, a better fees. Now, Chris, f- folks that are familiar with credit unions may not be familiar with the fact that you're the the ability that folks have to join a credit union has expanded. I guess the you know the the pool of possible um, members, uh, prospective members that you have, has expanded over the years, right? It has. We used to be the credit union uh, exclusively for uh, the Lockheed employees uh, down here in Marietta. When we expanded our charter and our field of membership, uh, we began originally with Cobb County. So common bond of membership uh, was uh, resident folks that lived, residents of folks that live and work in Cobb County. We've since expanded that to other counties to include Bartow, Cherokee, Paulding, and Fulton County. So uh, we serve all folks or folks that are, folks are eligible to join if they live or work in one of those five counties. And you've got physical locations in, in uh, those other counties, correct? We have a physical location in all of those counties with the exception of Bartow. Bartow is the latest uh, field of membership expansion that we've been granted by the State Department of uh, Banking and Finance. So we just added Bartow. Don't have a physical location there currently. You have grown significantly, I think, over the last few years, no? 
Well, when I arrived, we were about $575 million in assets, uh, had somewhere in the neighborhood of 80,000 or so members. Uh, so we've grown our membership by about 50%, and we've, um, you know, roughly getting close to tripling in, in asset size. Um, I think what that shows is the value that LGE is bringing to the communities. Folks are understanding uh, what we do and how we do it, and they that, that resonates with them. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly today, when 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 uh, you know some industries are, are getting bad names for the way that they they do business, and um, and and we reap the benefit of that because the only interest that I have is serving my members. Period. End of the sentence. Yeah, because again, you don't have stockholders. You're not beholden to Wall Street, uh, which is really kind of a big deal. That's right, and and I should mention too that we do have a board of directors. Um, and we have nine of those directors. Those directors are not paid. Uh, they do so on their own volition relative to their interest in our credit union and success and ensuring that we are, in fact, serving the members um, uh, that we have. And I think it's an important distinction, too. You know, I think the, the um, there, there's a lot of chatter sometimes about, you know, credit unions, you know, uh, taking over banks or, uh, you know, getting other customers. And, and banks talk a lot about, you know, what we're doing, but they never talk about how we're doing it. And the reality is relative to our structure, our volunteer board, uh, the fact that we, we uh, the, the, the income or the profits we generate go right back into our operation to serve our members. Uh, that's the difference. That's the main difference between uh, those two different types of financial institutions. I like to call the banking folks our cousins. That's what they are. Uh, we, do a, we do a lot of the same things. I choose to do it a little differently than they do. No problem. I don't. I, no skin off of my back. But uh, for whatever reason, for many, many years, uh, we've had a, a, an ongoing, um, I'll call it family feud. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're speaking with uh, Chris Leggett, uh, one, one of the cousins uh, that's in the feud, I guess you might say. But uh, no, seriously, uh, folks, if you just joined us, we're speaking with Chris Leggett. Uh, he's the CEO of LGE Community Credit Union. So, you know, I'm sure there's some friendly competitive banter there. But, I mean, the the, the it's not like the credit union uh, industry, and we'll sp speak just from an industry perspective, you know, is ready to knock down the banking industry, right? I mean, the, the relative sizes are pretty different, right? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, credit unions, based upon some estimates that I've seen, um, have somewhere between 6 and 8% of all of the deposits in the country. Hmm. So the actual combined assets of all credit unions in the country are smaller than uh, one of the top five banks. So if you think about the Chase's or Bank of America's, uh, not even close. And as a matter of fact, uh, many, um, you know, what we call regional banks like the new Truist uh, combination, uh, we're, we're not even a, well, I won't say that on, on, on radio. But, uh, <laughs> I'll go ahead. We're not, even a, we're not a pimple, you know what I mean? <laughs> we're not even a spot on their radar. Um, but, but um, you know, for whatever reason, that, 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 Somewhat of a feud. I don't even call it much of a feud anymore. It's just a rub, and and uh, uh, we learn to deal with it. We're not overly concerned with the banks. Uh, my, again, my concentration is not necessarily growth or anything. My concentration, my focus is serving my members. Once they become a member, then they become my focus. And mm. and so, um, but our growth does happen just by by sake of the value that we offer to people in our communities. So. Let's talk about that. I mean, in terms of how you get members, um, wh where do they typically come in? What's their first exposure to LGE? Uh, how do they get started? Well, they can uh, come in online, uh, as you can get do at most institutions today through lgeccu.org. Um, but many of our account openings still happen you know, at our branch. So one of our 13 locations is where most of our members still come in. Uh, interestingly enough, in these times, uh, we have, as a lot of folks have had to close our lobbies. So we are relying much more on the electronic and the online uh, mobile uh, channels that we have. But um, we, we do advertising in our particular areas. We have billboards. Uh, most of our growth, quite frankly, is still around our branches. 
Um, it's in areas, but we still, and we are seeing a greater uh, percentage of growth begin to happen as it has progressed over the years uh, via our, our online channels as well. So we like to um, keep those channels as robust as we possibly can because that's where everybody's headed. And, and we're trying to move in that direction quickly too, sometimes with some folks, um, I'll say kicking and screaming, but um, the reality is that's where our future is. And it's smart to begin getting on board with that today if you're not already. And you're of the size uh, now with a critical mass to, to, to be able to offer access to a lot of digital tools, online tools that maybe a lot of smaller credit unions just don't have the ability to do, right? I think that's fair uh, to some extent. There are a number of options out there that smaller credit unions and even smaller banks can take advantage of. This this uh, new fintech world, um, there are a lot of options out there that you can take advantage of. Now, those offerings may not be as robust and they may not be as um, customized as you might like them for your organization, uh, as you, you, you can just imagine. But there are platforms that I, I don't want to say plug and play. But that, in essence, is sort of what you, you see being sold out there to some extent or another uh, for, for smaller organizations that, have, that don't have the resource to you know, employ programmers and, and network folks and that kind of thing. It is more difficult, but it is doable. Folks, we're speaking with Chris Leggett, and he is with uh, LGE Community Credit Union. He's the CEO of, of the organization. Uh, Chris, talk a little bit about you uh, in your background. How did you get to where you are? Tell us a little bit about your journey. Well, I know we're in the heart of Georgia, but I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Ah, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> we born take and, imports all the time, so no problem. <laughs> born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, uh, started working literally right out of high school. I was, uh, I was one that I, I needed to get out and work. Uh, so started part time at a credit union in Jacksonville, um, did also uh, unloaded trucks for Ryder PIE and UPS along the way. Uh, and actually at the same time, quite honestly, I had to put food on the table for myself. And then um, I was able to get a full time job at a credit union shortly thereafter and uh, stayed there for almost 16 years. Did a little bit of everything while I was there, though. Uh, everything from I started off as a teller. And I, I left that credit union as the executive vice president and CFO. But um, I, at that point in time, I was just looking for something a little different. And so I left and went to work with a, a company down in Tampa, Florida, that uh, they sell ATM, debit, credit card processing services and uh, call center services, those kinds of things. And I ran national sales for a few years there. Um, I had always wanted to be a CEO. So I had an opportunity in Florida uh, to do that uh, after four years at this uh, company in Tampa. So I, I went there, uh, was there for about three or four years, and then got the opportunity to come up here to um, be the EVP and CFO and, and, and CEO in waiting uh, while the CEO at that point in time, Ed Collins, uh, prepared to retire. And then I took over in 08. I've got, um, I'm married, uh, my wife, Tara, and I have two 19 uh, year old twin boys. Uh, Cole and Trent that are going to Mercer University and Georgia College. Well, actually, they're not going there. They're going there from the house. <laughs> right, uh, right. As most students are right now. They're, uh, but they're doing they're doing very well. They're logging in, right? They're logging in. They're they're I guess they're using things like you and I are using here, Zoom and right. and uh, doing a lot of conference calls and those sorts of things with teachers. I believe they both have a couple more weeks to go before they finish this semester. That's awesome. Um so back to LGE. So you mentioned the fact that it's a membership organization. So the members in effect are, are the, uh, I guess the owners, maybe not, le- right. maybe not, are they the legal owners? Is that the, is that the way that they, works? They absolutely are. Oh, absolutely. wow. Okay. Yeah. This is an ownership organization. Yes. Okay. So, uh, and because, uh, it's a member owned organization, you're able to offer better rates on loans and deposits typically than a shareholder owned organization might be. What's that difference typically? I mean, you know, I know it can vary depending on where we are in the rate cycle and stuff like that. Right. But how does that work? How does that look? Well, I think it used to be much greater and it has shrunk as the rates 
have continued to decline. I was looking at a, a rate chart the other day, and, and actually, you, and you may not realize this, some of your listeners may, but rates have actually been on the decline since literally the early 80s. Mm. Um, they, they peaked in the early 80s. And, and quite honestly, if you had um, um, if you had some sort of investment that capitalized on lower rates and you rent it for the long term, you made a lot of money <laughs> if, you, uh, if you started in the early 80s. Yep. So uh, that difference certainly has come down from a rate perspective. From a percentage standpoint, though, I think credit unions uh, typically remain uh, much higher than their uh, their bank cousins uh, relative to deposit and and and, and loan rates. We, uh, you know, we we typically give we do have risk based elements to our pricing on loans, but the difference is there. Uh, nowadays, you know, uh, depending on the loan, could be a quarter, could be a half, could be a percentage point. Everyone's a little different, and I think that's the point that sometimes doesn't get realized. You know, relative to how I lend, for instance. Um, based upon credit scoring and, and, and uh, you know, cash flows and, and debt coverage ratios. It's a very complex sometimes, but um, my cutoffs relative to where the rate might change for a little different risk might be different than a bank. But um, typically our rates have consistently been uh, lower on loans. Our deposit rates are consistently higher. I'll give you one example of what we call, um, you know, certainly rewarding our, our most uh, loyal and uh, members and uh, something called high rewards checking. Uh, we've been offering this now since 08. Uh, we pay a significantly uh, higher rate than most are doing just for you to do everyday things, use of your debit card, use of your credit card, electronic statements, which used to be hard for most. Now it's just a given. I mean, who wants to get a statement in the mail anymore? Hmm. Um, so if you do those things, then we pay you one and a half percent on your checking account balance up to $25,000. Um, we give you 1% back on your credit card purchases. Um, so if, if you're a qualifier under that program, as you can see, that's significantly higher than probably most I- anything you can find out there amongst the other financial institutions in this particular area. But it's also about the relationships that we build at our credit union. We are a purpose-driven organization. So aside from the price, that the, the fact that we give better value through those things, uh, we think the difference that we make is through service. We're not going to get it right every time, but we are going to certainly try. And uh, yes, we're, we're going to have a few folks that are not going to like maybe uh, the way that we're doing things. I'll give you an example. We're going through some very difficult times right now with uh, you know closure of, of our lobbies, uh, changing hours, accommodating uh, and trying to keep our members safe as well as our employees. So that has disrupted our operation. Um, however, uh, we still are on the phones uh, every day. We're still on our branches trying to serve members via appointment. Um, uh, some, some members would like us to do things a little differently, but uh, we have to do it for the collective good. Uh, but on any of those, any complaint we ever receive, if I get a complaint via email or over the phone uh, or somebody's having a hard time getting service, we always jump to that. And uh, I think that's where we really make the difference, uh, quite honestly, here at LGE. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's uh, and I, I don't know who who to credit this statement to, but you, there's a statement about you how you you really find out the character of a of a business when something goes wrong, right? That's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Yeah, Chris, talk about your retail products. Let's just make sure we get that out there. Uh, we talked about your, your different deposit accounts, but you're, you offer automobile loans, mortgages, uh, different kinds of personal loans, right? We, we still will give you a signature loan, John. Really? So if you need a thousand dollars, come on in, just sign a piece of paper and you'll get it. You probably won't give me one, but you'll give, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of great people out there. You'd give one to, right? So there, there's a lot of folks. So uh, we, you know, we, we have folks that maybe there, there's still a lot of people out there that have the need for just basic services. So $500, a thousand dollar signature loan, mm. uh, certainly credit cards, uh, all types of consumer loans in the way of automobiles, recreational vehicles. Um, you know, we like to call it the toys. So the RVs, the boats, those kinds of things. And of course, a full array of, of mortgage products, uh, first mortgages, uh, home equity, home improvement, uh, those types of things. And uh, we have some uh, some products that go along with sort of uh, Fannie Freddie Mac standards. And we also have some custom products in there as well that we created. 
And of course, we also have a, a business or a commercial uh, area where we do business and commercial lending and also have a business and commercial deposits. Um, uh, that, that's an area that we've only started maybe in the last seven or eight years. But um, again, uh, we, there are businesses out there that need services that maybe don't need it to the level that most banks want to accommodate. Uh, we're, we're willing to make much smaller loans and, and do things a little differently to try to help that member of the community. Yeah, I think there's a, uh, uh, we won't get too deep into this, uh, and you'll understand why after I say it, but, um, I, th- I think the, uh, this whole situation with PPP has really gotten folks, um, concerned, we'll call it about how big banks approach small businesses. And I'm talking about the mega banks how they approach small businesses. Um, I think that's a fair statement um, because it's pretty much out there. And uh, what you're saying is, is you're really set up to, to work ideally with small businesses uh, th- that really drive this country. Uh, that, that's absolutely correct. I, I will say this about PPP and, and, and in an effort to, um, not not protect anyone or, or make excuses, but um, when PPP was rolled out, it was it was not ready for prime time. Um, you know, a lot of folks watched the news or, or heard heard something on the radio about PPP being a, a grant or or being something that was going to be fully forgiven, and that was all they heard. Right. Uh, the reality is, the reality is, as a, an SBA lender, um, we have to still do things according to what the SBA lays out for us, particularly when there's a guarantee involved. So we have to ensure that we do things that SBA requires to uh, ensure that guarantee uh, is paid in the event of a default. And we were not ready, as most folks were not ready, when the government said, okay, here it is. Um, (laughs) And we got overwhelmed, quite honestly. And I've talked to a number of my peers in credit use and banks. And uh, it, it was just not a good couple of days. So <laughs> we did not have a lot of time to prepare for it. But I think we recovered well. And I think we have um, uh, have done a good job. We have almost, uh, we have over, I think, 60 uh, loans that we had approved, got SBA uh, approvals on, and we're in the process of dispersing right now, which will result in somewhere in the neighborhood of seven or $8 million out into uh, the community small businesses. And truly, we serve truly small businesses. And so these are not loans going to some of the uh, more prominent, uh, you know, uh, franchisees that you might have heard some news about recently that have gotten millions of dollars. Right. Uh, that's not the types of, um, of borrowers that we have. These are true small businesses that absolutely need this money to survive. Um, and we're doing our best to try to get that in their pockets. And we have a, a roughly another hundred or so. Many of these were not members of ours originally. So when they came to us, as I've talked about earlier, uh, and, and wanted to apply for PPP because we're an SBA preferred lender, mm-hmm. well, we had to, they, they had to join the credit union. So there was another step in there mm-hmm. because quite frankly, I can't, I can't do anything for you unless you're a member. So mm-hmm. that lengthened the process, but we have another hundred or so that are waiting for the next um, round of PPP funding. And we have heard that um, that funding is going to be released at some point uh, this week, possibly. And as soon as it is, uh, we hope to get those things input very quickly and be prepared to do that. So we're in the process of doing that now to get ready to get those in and get that money out to our communities uh, as this PPP uh, program was intended. Yeah. And to be fair, what I was so just to be clear, so I don't get anybody mad at me, what I, <laughs> uh, what I would it is clear that the banking industry got a and and the credit union industry I'm you know the, the depository institutions got a big old uh, processing headache dumped right in their laps that they weren't expecting a month ago right so because the SBA couldn't deal with it so they just dumped it in the industry's lap and um so that's clear what i was referring to is what you mentioned is how it seemed some some bigger organizations and there's some actually I'm going to shout them out some institutions of higher learning in the northeast that got some loans that you would think really do you really need that and and they obviously right. got that through their financial institution and you wonder how the priorities occurred you know when some of that happened right so when there's all these small businesses out there 
that are still waiting, even though they've, their application has been in and approved and processed by their institution, they're still waiting for that, but I'll get off that editorial, <laughs> but that's, that's, uh, you're, you're, you're right. Yeah. But you're right. Yeah. So I think that's, that's where people's angst has really gotten, gotten, uh, up when they think about it and they realize, you know, Hey, th- th- this was a processing nightmare for, for, uh, banks and credit unions to deal with, uh, for sure. Right out in the, or, you know, even if you're yeah. an SBA preferred lender and you're used to this, right. Well, we're, we're used to, you know, we, we may be processed, you know, a dozen, a dozen and a half SBA loans a, a year. And all of a sudden, uh, in one day, we had over 100 applications uh, that, that came in the door, either through a phone call or folks uh, trying to set appointments at our branches to uh, get the paperwork together. So we, we were just not prepared for that. And, right. and neither was anyone else, as, as you have seen. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, folks, we're speaking with Chris Leggett, and he's the CEO of LGE Community Credit Union. So something came out of that uh, your answer there that I think people may not know is you're you're an SBA preferred lender. Yes, we've been um, we've uh, got the preferred status uh, about five years or so ago, and basically what that does is it gives us the ability to do some things that maybe just a, I'll call it a regular SBA lender would not be able to do. For instance, we can approve, SBA gives us the authority to approve certain loans um, that come with a guarantee. Um, so it quickens or hastens the process. So as you know, uh, when somebody comes in, or if you come in for a loan, uh, the last thing you want to wait is one more minute longer than you need to. And so it gives us the ability to, to hasten that process um, and, and that that could be that could be you know several days or even uh, several weeks quicker than what you might otherwise go through with uh, with a, a regular SBA lender. I'll say that. Awesome, great work. So, Chris, I think we've covered this, but I want to make sure that we've we've got it out there. Just talk about who who your ideal customer is, either on the uh, personal side or the business <clears throat> side. I mean, who 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 is going to really benefit most from? doing business with LGE community credit union? Well, we, the, the consumers in our area, it's just the everyday folks like you and me. Um, you know, we have a need to have some savings. We have a need to have a checking account or something we can transact business with out in the community. Uh, so go to lunch or, 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 or go to the department store or pay the rent. Um, so you need that. Um, you, you need some some investment level of money as well. We have an investment group. We call it LGE Investment Group. Very unique, isn't it? That's very <laughs> original. Uh, we also have an insurance agency. As you know, we, we finance cars. And um, if you buy a car, the very next thing you need to ensure that you have is insurance. So we provide property and casualty insurance through our, our insurance agency uh, and homeowners insurance because we have mortgages. So uh, it, it's for the everyday person. The, I, I won't say the average Joe. But uh, we serve folks of, 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 of modest means, I'll put it like that, uh, that have a need to be able to uh, use a financial institution to execute the day-to-day of their financial lives. And uh, that, that's basically it in a nutshell. We have the ability to serve folks of, 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 uh, of higher means, and we also have the ability to serve uh, folks um, you know, that are maybe on the lower income spectrum relative to uh, using that money or having uh, access to the money in a safe and sound way. Um, we are insured by the federal government through the National Credit Union Association, uh, the NCUA, um, and um, up to $250,000 for all accounts. That, that aside, we hope it never gets to that. Uh, our credit union has a, a well capitalized at well over 12%, which should be something to some in that if something did happen, where, uh, you know, we, we went through a tough time like we did in 07, 08, 09 um, with the financial crisis back then, that your financial institution can survive it and not just go away. Mm. And uh, so that should be some assurance for folks that uh, we, we don't believe that we're going anywhere. We're a conservative organization. We don't take a whole lot of chances on either side of the scale. Um, we're, we're there for Main Street, um, our, our Main Street community in the five counties I mentioned earlier, Cobb, Cherokee, Fulton. Bartow and Paulding counties. So if, if, um, somebody puts a deposit in your, your, uh, um, institution, that money's not being lent, uh, 
uh, in some other state or uh, way off in uh, some other country or something, now, right? It, it might be lent to someone just like you, John. Uh, <laughs> well, hopefully, you... certainly, but, but certainly in the community. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ninety uh, over ninety percent of our deposits and over ninety percent of our loans are right here in the community. So we have a billion one uh, outstanding in loans today. Uh, that's a billion one in loans just in that four or I'm sorry, five county area. So we're doing all that we can to make sure that folks uh, financial needs are met through the various things that we offer. I'll say this too. You know, we, we pride ourselves on being a purpose driven organization. And, and I truly mean that when I say it, and I hope the folks out there in radio land can hear my passion about this. Um, I'm only here for my members period, end of story. I think I said that at the very uh, beginning of the uh, of the broadcast here. Um, I guess it's not a broadcast in Radio Land, is it, John? Is it a, <laughs> what is it? Is it called a broadcast? Yeah, I, or, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Why not? Uh, so, but we, we are truly driven. We're here for our members alone, and, and that is it. And we hope that folks, and we think they do, see the value in our organization. And if they do, uh, we welcome them in. We encourage you to take advantage of the services and the way that we're providing for our members to do business with us. Um, it's interesting, you know, there's a lot of change with how folks are getting served today at branches. You know, you see banks that are closing branches or they're consolidating. It only makes sense because of the advent of online and mobile and the acceptance of that through that smartphone that you and I both have in our back pockets mm. um, because you have more power in that than, than we ever had, uh, you know, when, when you and I were 20 or 30 years old. Uh, with big, large computers. I remember a big one that sat on my desk one time that I did accounting work with, and I could do all that on the phone plus a, like a thousand times worth of stuff. But um, we're investing in certainly those kinds of things. Uh, members, uh, you know, we're finding members too today that are coming to our branches. Only our drive ups are open. So we, we still have members that, that qu- quite frankly, don't want an ATM card, don't want a debit card. Um, and, and, you know, it limits them in times of crisis like this. Mm. You need additional options. So whether or not you like using the ATM machine, um, that's not the question. The question is, are you prepared in the event that something like this happens again? So at the very least, you should learn how to use these services so that you have all of the access that you need. And at least with LGE, all of our online and mobile banking services are free. Uh, use of our ATMs is free. Um, so it's not like you have to pay any more to utilize those those uh, services that are out there available for you. That's awesome. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, community in terms of lending and taking deposits and lending into, into the communities you serve, but but uh, you take it one step further in terms of some of your community involvement. Uh, and I wish you'd talk a little bit about oh, that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, we started up a foundation. Actually, when I arrived at LGE, we had something they call Operation Donation. And um, it basically was our employees uh, getting together and doing fundraising within the credit union. So bake sales and, and uh, flower sales and all kinds of things mm. that we did. Uh, uh, it, you're just basically internal. And at the end of the year, around Christmas time, we would have a celebration of that and invite the folks that have, were the recipients of those donations from that effort of our employees. Uh, that expanded, got a little larger. And then once it got to a point, we felt like it was appropriate to incorporate. So we created the LGE Foundation. Um, and that foundation today has donated approximately a million dollars over the last uh, five or six years to local charities. So, so today, um, our employees pick. Uh, nine charities that we support. Uh, We try to make sure that there's at least one in each county that we serve. Um, And then we use also 10% of those funds that we raise during the year designated for individual needs. So we might hear about a family in need or a service member that's come back and and needs some help or some money to get started here or there. So there's a lot of individual needs as well. Uh, But today we support uh, um, uh, charities like Warehouse of Hope and Paulding, uh, Must Ministries, uh, Next Step Ministries, uh, a number of places uh, like that uh, for those funds. And last year, we raised almost $250,000. Uh, all the money we raised through our efforts are matched dollar for dollar by the credit union. So 
If our employees raise $100,000, the credit union matches that for 100 to create 200000 of giving. Wow, that's awesome. That's something that I did not realize. Uh, having some familiarity with your with your organization, thanks to Linda Coyle, I'll shout her out. She's tr- awesome. Yeah. Right here in North Fulton. Uh, hey, Linda. I, I did not realize it was an employee match. So that that's really awesome. I mean, you, you it's yeah. not just the organization. It's the employees that are pitching in on that. Yes, our employees, um, as a matter of fact, just through payroll deduction last year, uh, created with their own deductions plus what the credit union matches of their deductions or their con- contributions was more than $50,000 of that 250000 that we donated to the community. So not only do they give through their paychecks, but they give of their time. We have a number of volunteer opportunities during the year at the uh, the charitable organizations that we support, uh, the events that we put on for uh, fundraising, which are well supported by our community. We appreciate all of that support that we get there. And of course, it goes ba- dollar for dollar. Um, you know, you look at some charities and, and I, I'm not calling anybody out here, but you want to see that the vast majority of those dollars are given away because that's what they're for. Sure. And uh, at LGE, every dollar that we raise, less the expenses of putting on those events, goes to our community. And um, uh, all of our employees, we have, a, we have a, a committee that's comprised of credit union employees that decide how to sort of run. They keep the accounting and all those things going. So it's, it's, a, it's a team effort, a lot of volunteer hours and effort that goes into that. And this year we hope to, it's going to be a little tougher year this year because we've been able to, have, we're having to uh, probably postpone some things that we, we may have otherwise done and the support's going to be a little less. But we certainly hope to be able to donate at least 200000 out to those needy, needy uh, folks in, uh, the, in our charitable uh, organizations in the community this year. And much needed this year, particularly given the uh uh, uh, rise in unemployment and folks that are in need. Uh, so that's awesome work. Uh, uh, Chris, thank you for that. And, and thanks to the LGE employees out there that are doing, uh, contributing, uh, in that way. That's awesome. Um, so this has been great, Chris, and we, we've great overview. And certainly there's probably some folks that, uh, would like me to get to the next question quickly, which is how can they be in touch uh, if they're interested in uh, LGE and some of the services that you offer? The easiest way to get information about LGE is go to lgeccu.org. Uh, that is our website, and there's a, a vast amount of information there. And uh, once you familiarize yourself with our organization and you think this is a place that you'd like to, uh, to join and bring your business over, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So you can uh, set up an appointment at one of our branches right now. Um, or uh, And you can do that by calling um, our number at 770-424-0060. Uh, but the website's the easiest place to, to find out all the information. And you made an important point there is that the branches per se are not closed. It's just you need to make an appointment. I mean, if you want to go inside and see someone, you just need to make an appointment ahead. That, that, that is correct. Right now, during uh, the, the situation with the COVID virus, uh, we closed our lobbies several weeks ago. Uh, we also closed on Saturdays, which is, has been traditionally our busiest day in the lobbies. So we, we had to do that for the safety of our employees and our members alike. Uh, we are hoping to do something here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Governor Kemp relaxed some of the stay-at-home order uh, last evening that take effect, I think, Friday and then Monday. Uh, but we're still on a stay-at-home you know, throughout the state through the 30th. Um, But we're looking at how we can uh, ultimately reopen uh, our branches in in a safe way. Um, I like to tell our employees and everyone that I see, family and alike, be safe and be smart. Because being smart, I think, is probably the most important thing right now if we're going to get our our community and our economy back to where uh, we'd all like it to be. Can't say it any better than that. Uh, Chris Leggett. He's the CEO of LGE Community Credit Union. Chris, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, John. I appreciate the help, and uh, thanks a lot for the interview. It was really enjoyable. Yeah, thank you. Folks, just a reminder that you can listen to our show on all the major podcast platforms. That would be Apple, Stitcher, Google, TuneIn, Spotify, Overcast. Um, Actually, I have yet to be challenged on an app you cannot find us on. Just search for North Fulton Business Radio on any of those apps. Um, We're even on YouTube, folks, so check us out. 
Uh, we're also on NorthFultonBusinessRadio.com. That's our uh, website. You can find a uh, archive of going on 220 some shows with 500 terrific business leaders, uh, guests been on those shows, uh, business leaders, uh, like Chris in that archive. So check us out there and also connect with us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, t- Facebook, Twitter, North Fulton BRX is our handle on all of those platforms. So for my guest, Chris Leggett, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.